So last week we we dived into beginners e-commerce, and you don't have to have attended last week's to attend the day. Uh, but we will make reference to some points just to recap uh, for anyone who uh, was there. And we did last week highlight that once you have built your e-commerce site and you've got your store up online, that you actually become a digital marketeer, whether you want to or not, uh, whether you, that's your background or not, you, you will need to understand uh, key elements of digital um, because that's going to actually help you improve your whole business and your selling online. I want to start with an example before we get into the, the core presentation. So what I, I did is I am perfect for today's weather, maybe. I went to a, a site we all know is Amazon and I typed in umbrella uh, looking at the, the weather. And this was the first result or one of the first results. And you can do this in anything. And next time you're, you're buying something online, uh, do look out for this. But when I, I looked at this product and uh, what you see here, I just want to highlight some key things here. And this is, what ranks number one are on position one, two, three in Amazon. So it's very competitive and, and hard to be here. So we're looking at best practice, uh, really. So you can see in the title, I see the word umbrella. It's mentioned twice now. So we, maybe a wee bit too much mentioned it twice, but it is mentioned twice. But what they're also doing is they're highlighting some key uh, things or elements of the umbrella. So I see it's windproof. I see it's folding, it's compact. Wow, so I see loads of information there right in the title straight away. And then I have, I think, seven photos of this product. So the number of times I go onto an e-commerce site and see maybe one or two photos of a product, yet uh, this, this brand here is seven photos up. And I'd also like to draw your attention to the photos themselves. So have a look at this photo and, and you might notice something different here. What they're actually doing is they're highlighting some key selling points. Um, so if you can imagine we didn't have these four circles, pullouts, highlighting key elements on the image. We just had a standard image of the umbrella. It's not going to be really selling anything to me, yet it's, it's, this picture is so powerful because it's telling me that it's water repellent, the handle is non-slip, and there's an automatic button, and it, uh, it's got stainless steel pillars. So again, how, how incredible um, an opportunity is this to sell, yet so many people don't take this opportunity. So again, if you do have an e-commerce site, how are you positioning your products on those pages? Are you doing something like this? And the whole idea of an e-commerce site is that it's selling when you're back to the, the dream is when you're, you're, you're asleep or it's the weekend or out of hours uh, or even during the day that these, these pages are salespeople for your business. And, and that picture there alone is an incredible um, example of what a, a, a a really good picture on an e-commerce site could be like. And again, have you got this on your site? Another thing just to draw your attention to the right of the pictures, we've got loads of text detailing the key selling points of the, the product. I can see the price and I can see the delivery information. So uh, this product is prime free one day delivery. But again, uh, if it wasn't, what is the delivery charge? So it's very clear and transparent what it is. And then I've made um, buttons to purchase and um, very easy to purchase so I can add that to my cart. So again, that's a really good example of uh, a product that ranks number one on Amazon, but we're not finished uh, with that just yet. If I scroll down, I actually get to see this on this product as well. So I've got another range of photos. I've got text here highlighting the key uh, aspects of the product. So again, they're not just leaving me with the information that we've already seen. And if I scroll down again, I get this, I've got FAQs. So questions that people are asking and then the, the owner of the product is answering, but also consumers are answering. And then I've got reviews and where Amazon is very smart is that they're allowing user generated content here. They're allowing people to uh, add their own photos and videos uh, into this platform as part reviews. And you can see well, basically what's happening there is this page, if you scroll down again, like there's 1,350 reviews. So um, most of these pages are, most of these reviews are adding in a couple of lines of text. So all of a sudden you're getting this big long page uh, that's gonna rank very well in Amazon, but also in Google itself. So what an incredible page of information if you're looking to buy an umbrella. Uh, every question you could possibly have is gonna be answered here, good and bad, you're gonna see photos. Uh, so it's gonna really help you make a buying decision. So if you're after an umbrella, chances are you land on this page, you're going to make the purchase. 
And then I've went back, uh, I think on Amazon, there's maybe seven or 12 pages of umbrellas. So I went back to page three. Uh, so to, to find a, uh, an umbrella that isn't ranking and not appearing on page one of Amazon. And uh, just to see what we see. So here, as I say, it's an umbrella. It looks really, really nice, different, uh, nice design. When I look at the title, I've got umbrella with glitter, glitter stars. So they're not telling me anything about uh, key aspects of the umbrella. If I look just below that, I see a price and delivery. That's fine, great. Um, but if I compare the description here compared to the previous product, there's maybe 15 words here. Maybe in the other page, it was two or 300. There's no comparison. I'm getting very little information here. If I look at the photos on the left, I have three photos. And again, none of them have any uh, key descriptions or, or pullouts on the photos to sell me any more aspects of the product. I scroll down the page to see, because uh, I want to know about the product, I want to buy it. It's, it does it answer or solve my problem. Um, and again, I look at the product description and the details here, probably another 15 words, 20 words. It, it's, the page is so bare that Amazon has actually put an ad for other products in the middle of my product, which of course you don't want happening. Um, I'm looking at the FAQs and there's no FAQs because potentially no one's seen this page and there's no reviews. So there's no information here. So again, as a consumer, how likely am I to buy this umbrella or even see this umbrella because I've landed on that first example um, and does it actually stop me going and looking at other products? And again, back to it, if you have a, or you're building a, a, um, a site or you have um, a site already up, what experience are people getting on your site today? Are they being stopped in their tracks and just consuming all your content and making that purchase? Or are you forcing people by not giving them that information to go to uh, another site and try and find that information if they're not satisfied uh, on that page? And I appreciate, again, if you've got a site that has 50 or 100 products on it and you're more like uh, the second example here, uh, where do you start? But what I would suggest is that you go back and enhance the, the key products and um, the ones that give you your best sellers, for example, and uh, the ones that give you the best margin and maybe the ones that you have a lot of stock in uh, at the moment. And there, that's where you start, and then you filter down over a period of time. Maybe you update two or three or five products a week, but over a year, that means that you've covered nearly all your site, and that would transform how your business ranks in search engines, but also then, of course, when people land on your, your site, if you're running ad campaigns or people are finding you from emails, uh, how many people convert as well. And the exact same, it's the exact same principles, and, and again, we'll go through this today, for products or services. So if you're, no matter what you're selling, it is the same information. If you're selling a service here, people will want to see what's the key points, uh, what's the, the benefits, um, if there's FAQs, if there's any reviews. So what I'm gonna do now is hand over to Stephen. He's gonna take you through some technical aspects and then I'm gonna jump back in and look more at the marketing towards the end of this. Thanks, Kieran. So just to, to kind of get started and almost recap uh, what we looked at last week, we want to understand, first of all, when we get into e-commerce, our, our model, who are we selling to? When we go to e-commerce, when we set up our platform, or maybe we have our platform in place, who are we selling to? And we break these down into four main components or four main categories. And these consist of B2C, which is business to consumer. And this is the most common uh, occurrence of obviously uh, the business model you would be aware of in e-commerce, and that's you no know, business uh, like yourself selling to an individual consumer, whether that's like Amazon or selling individual products. We then have business to business or B2B, which like ourselves, we would sell as a software as a service. And that's where we're selling either goods or service to our other businesses. And then from that, we look at consumer to consumer or C2C. From this, think of eBay or Etsy, a company where you as an individual or as a creative are maybe selling your own products or your own services to another platform. And then finally, we look at consumer to business, which is quite simply us looking at uh, when we're actually selling our own services to a business. And I think of that maybe as a freelance solution or a freelancer.com. We maybe go on to the site, we'll actually sell our own services. And understanding these models is actually key to the platform that we have. Maybe again, as we spoke about last week, you're getting started and you're on the basic plan. We are just getting started with an e-commerce platform. Or maybe you're looking at your current system or your current online solution and looking at those platforms. So what you'll see here on screen now is some references, the most common e-commerce platforms that you have available, whether that's Wix, Workspace, WooCommerce, or Shopify, or even others. And we look at these platforms, the key factor that values these products is their features. What can you do and what can you include within those bundles? So what we've done is we've broken these down into some key features. When you're looking either at your current website or your current business, 
Do you have these features? And what can you do maybe if you don't in order to get those? So the first thing we want to look at is a content management system. You'll often hear the terminology CMS being used throughout uh, websites such as WordPress. Content management is so important for your products. At the end of the day, when you're trying to manage your website, you must have the ability to add or edit your own products. That's as simple as changing the price, maybe changing the description as Karen was saying to add those extra keywords into the product. You need to ensure that you have that control. There's nothing worse, and maybe you're in that position right now, than having to go back to your developer, or go back to your team with updates every time you want to add a new product or add a new service to your website. So let's make sure that when you're choosing your framework or you're having a look at those frameworks that you have a content management system in place to be able to manage that content from there. And then from that, we want to look at stock inventory management or stock inventory systems. And quite simply, this is just the, the phase of, of process that you have whenever you're managing stock online. How can you protect your business from a customer service disaster? If someone goes through your website, buys a product that you don't actually have, and then you're left to try and phone and explain the circumstances that you're in. With a stock inventory management system, you can actually cover a, a variety of options here. So first of all, you can have a stock counter on your website. You can create that sense of excitement and buzz around your products. The people know there's only five left. It's that excitement and, and almost tension to get in and buy it now before the sale runs out. There's a promotive aspect within that. And then of course we have the uh, protective of your business in terms of that stock. When a product does go out of stock, the stock management system will actually set that to zero. It'll set it as sold out. And once again, that in a sense is a promotion behind your website that shows that that product is so requested and valued that it's sold out. And then with that, with that stock management, there's so many other options we can add to that, such as adding options for drop shipping, where you might not carry the stock yourself, where you actually bring that in from another supplier. And that is something we can go into when it comes to drop shipping and looking at how you can integrate that with your current platform and how that might work. And then arguably one of the most important things that we'll look at in some of the later slides is reporting analytics. How do you know how your website's performing? How is your sales, how is your product sales or your services selling? Are you, do you know what products are the most common sellers or do you know which products are the worst and how you can help promote that and bring that up the rankings by looking at your analytics and looking at tracking to try and bring back those potentially lost conversions that you could have had. And then, and then is one of the biggest things you'll often see, and whether we like to do this on our website or not, we know it's the most common thing, and that's promotion and discount tools. Are we advertising incentivization to our customers? Are we putting an offer in front of them that encourages them to click through that website and dig in a bit deeper? In, in other words, are we giving them that instruction? When they land on the homepage, do they see a buy now or a 5% off or get free shipping over a certain amount? Or in this case, buy one, get one free. It's the most common thing, but let's be honest, we all know we do it ourselves as well. When we go into Tesco, we fall for those deals. Same as when we go on websites. When we go on our websites and we see that we can get an extra product or we get a percentage or a sample, you'll see a variety of different promotive and discount tools that can be applied all within these own platforms. And then in search engine optimization, as Kieran has relevantly said beforehand, we need to look at obviously how we're defining our products. And again, in later slides, we'll have a look at how we can actually achieve that and what we can do to do that. But we want to ensure that these features, these e-commerce platforms that we're looking at have these abilities to create our own meta descriptions and meta titles. And these are what Google uses to put our, our product or our service in position for search. And then we have email marketing. So email marketing is, what you do obviously once you have a customer. If someone's went through your process, maybe they've went to the checkout, maybe they haven't, or they've dropped off at the checkout, we can have a look at a thing later called abandoned card tracking. Or maybe for instance, they come into your site, they don't quite commit to the purchase, but they do sign up to your mailing list, your newsletters. What can you do with those systems? And platforms like Wix now have full e-commerce or email marketing systems built into their system where you can do email marketing and email campaigns direct from their own platforms. Alternatively now, you can look at things like MailChimp, where you're able to create templates that don't provide much in the way of no technical experience, but allow you very easily to put together a framework for email marketing. And then finally, payment options. Are you giving your audience enough payment options in order to convert? So for instance, the most common is PayPal and then Stripe, which will appear in your checkout field as you know, chip and pin or credit card and debit card. But you may be aware that there is others available. Klarna is one of the biggest payment gateways at the moment for ASOS, which is commonly known as the top uh, clothing retail online store. Klarna allows you to add monthly payments to your website. So you can provide a customer with the ability to pay over a series of months and, and allow them an easy gateway into your site. But there's a many more variety of options out there and we would encourage you to have a look at those payment systems, including their own fees, uh, as they will be applicable for these products. Then we want to look at in the process is the user experience and the user journey. 
Now this is the same, the same for whether you already have a site up at the moment, or maybe it is a brand new platform you're getting started with. And so the first thing you'll see here is maybe the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this is maybe the bad experience of those, uh, those user experience websites. So we'll look at linkscars.com and you can check this website out. It's commonly most referred to as the, uh, the best example of a bad website. Uh, and that's how you can find it in Google. So what you'll see here, first of all, when it comes to that design is how crazy it is. There's so much going on. You're not too sure where's the attention, where do you want me to go to? So when we talk about those call to actions, we talk about those features, where's the instruction? So initially when I see this site, it is an e-commerce site. So I can see here they're selling cars and I see here these yellow boxes that say rent new. But from that, there's actually no instruction. So when you look into this in a bit deeper sense, you actually realize that the developers of this website or the designer, they haven't actually told you where they want you to go. There's no incentivization for promotion. There's no click here to buy now. There's nothing. So we're just under the impression that we just have to click endlessly around the site. And this is one of the biggest problems that face a lot of websites today, especially when it comes to e-commerce, is giving your audience a clear and simple instruction. And, and the use of white space can be very well organized in order to give your clients a focus of where they need to be targeting on your website, where you want to send them. The next example then, which is Penny's Juice. Penny's Juice is quite simply, it's an online juice care website. So when we look here, we want to look at the checkout process. So traditionally, you want to get your audience from cart to basket to checkout in the most simplest steps possible in the quick, quickest time. When we look at load time and performance, which Karen will mention later, we can see how that can have an effect on the user experience. And one of the things we see here is now we've got someone to the checkout, we've got them to almost submit their order, we now see the form process that they have to go through. So he, see here, the first couple of forms are quite simple. When it comes to the design, it's maybe not the cleanest or the most contrast friendly, but you'll see the first couple of forms are quite simple. And then we look at the product itself. To actually buy the product, you don't just go to the product on the website and hit add the basket. You now have to complete a form, start entering quantities everywhere. And as you can see, I'm already bored by the time I've got down to the next pictures. And from that, I've already left the site. And you can see that you must look at your user experience when it comes to the entire process, from the start of the website to looking at the visual when you, as soon as you land on that homepage, right to the checkout when you're going to submit that order. And the next example here is maybe a better example of taking those bits and pieces that we learned from our previous user experience and even our features and blending that in. So when we look at newchapter.com, we can see here clearly, we have our large banner image in the center with the world's ocean day, and we can see our instruction, which is to learn more. But then just below that, we first of all have our first level of incentivization. We have here free shipping on any order through a certain date frame. And that date creates a sense of urgency for us to book in now to get that offer. And then at the same time, we have our instruction, we have our top picks, our key performing products, where we can buy now, and it's as easy as that to go through the website. And that overall gives you a sense of comfort. It's clear and it's very clean to understand what the, the terminology and what they want to do. And there's a few other options on this page. When we look at new chapter rewards on the bottom left, and then live chat on the bottom right. From here, we're encouraged with that user reward scheme where you can buy uh, customers in through a reward scheme and encourage them to come back and, and revisit your website and revalue your products. And then finally, you have that live chat feature to engage with your audience. The next site then does take a balance of that as well. And we look at that from blissworld.com. So blissworld.com kind of takes the best of both worlds here, where it takes that amount of uh, white space that clean design overall layout and puts it right in front of you. So when you land on the site, the first thing you see is that slider that says shop now. But then when you look down to the just arrived section, you'll see there's arrows either side and that would actually rotate through. So we get a list of all their top performing products. We have the ability again to add to the buy. And again, it's just that instruction. It's so clean, it's simple. And from that, we're then giving the added content or those promotional incentives of, if you look at the bottom there on the screenshot, you'll see free shipping, free samples, surprises. And then even at the top, you'll see that there's a section there for free shipping over a certain amount. So again, bringing all those experiences back, bringing that user experience back into what we can see here is the prime example. So when you look at your own sites, do be aware that, you know, step back out of the business standpoint, look at your website again from a fresh set of eyes and see, do you have that almost checklist and process? Is it as clean and simple to navigate your website as you think it is? And let's have a look at maybe at some of the areas that you can promote your business online through those incentivizations. The next thing we want to look at then is the technical considerations. What should you be doing technically speaking on your website to ensure that it's the best and the most optimal position? And the first thing and arguably the most important we're going to look at is security and ensuring that you have an SSL and your site is up to security standards. So the first thing and most commonly people look at when they visit a website now is that green padlock that you'll often be aware of at the top left corner of your website. And for you, it's maybe something you're used to. Maybe you just bypass it. 
But as COVID has caused more users to get online, it's caused more audiences to get online who have never been on the website before and, and start to invest in online stores and online shopping. There may be, they've been told about all these stories of you know, problems on the websites, issues with, with the internet and, and different security risks. So what you want to do is give them that trust. First of all, by simply adding an SSL to your site, you're giving your users that satisfaction and trust that when they land on the site, they see that padlock, that symbolization of security. But then there's some other technical considerations that we must consider when it comes to encrypting your data, such as GDPR. So when we go to a checkout, what details are we asking from our audience? Are we asking them for their name, their email address? And of course, we're asking them for their payment information. So you need to ensure that by GDPR compliance that you have that encryption on your site. And quite simply, an SSL is encrypting that communication. So when it comes to what details you're typing into the form to then processing that payment, is it being encrypted and is it secured? And that can all help the user experience and the confidence behind your website. So then we want to look at your analytics and tracking. And this is arguably, and, and this in the next slide, we'll look at analytics. And this is arguably, from my point of view, one of the most important things on your website is understanding your business. How do you understand how your website's performing? So we'll break this down into five key points, which is acquisition, activation, revenue, retention, and referral. Quite simply, acquisition is the source of your traffic. Do you know where your traffic's being sent to your website? Do you understand, is it coming from Google search? And is it coming in from those keywords that you're typing into your products? Or maybe there's a referral website. Maybe there's another website that's actually sending you that traffic and how you can help reinvest in your content or reinvest in that link that you're building with other businesses. Once your users then get onto your website, What's the activation? What are they doing? Is there, is there a strategy behind your website? Obviously, there's the sale conversion at the end of the day, but as our users clicking through your website, are they signing up your emails? Or again, are they actually converting in their sales? So from that, through Google Analytics, you can set up a thing called event tracking, where you can real-time track your users as they go through the site and get a calculation of what they're doing. And then naturally, we have revenue. So it's obviously important to understand our sales funnel and our revenue on a, on a recurring basis. We need to understand month to month or week to week, how are we performing in sales? And from that, again, we can start to target our social media strategies, our advertising. And even again, as Karen said, we're all digital marketers as we go through this. So understand where we need to promote, where we need to reinvest potentially in our business to get that uh, key return of investment. We look at retention then as that ability of understanding what are our customers' habits. For instance, one of the most common things that's very easy to do with Google Analytics is see how busy your website is at certain times in the day. So for instance, if we know that your website's extremely active at 5 p.m., then it may be valuable to put a social media post out at about half four or quarter to five in order to get that you know, ad in front of those users who may be already on your website. And then for them, when they see that ad, it's a such easier conversion strategy. So it's looking at those habits and looking at ways you can get those users back to your website through email marketing and others, et cetera. And then finally, we have referrals. Understanding which platform in terms of social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, who is the biggest referral? Who is actually sending you the most traffic? And again, it's imperative that you understand where this is so you reinvest in the right areas when it comes to those analytics. In regards to Google Analytics, I would highly encourage you to set that up today or as soon as possible if you don't already have it. And if you do, jump in it as soon as we finish this call. You'll be amazed at the features. And at the start, it can be a lot of things going on, but you can really customize the dashboard. So you'll see here when it comes to analytics, we can track everything from what device users are using. So we're making sure is our site really optimized for mobile. If 80% of our traffic's on a mobile device, we can ensure that we're set up for that. We can also have re revenue reports. So we can understand our previous five points all within Google Analytics. So exactly we know what our users are doing, how they're accessing the site, and then what we can do to optimize their experience. And then when it comes to tracking, we can look at tools such as abandoned cart tracking higher users are engaging. So one of the most common things we see is the average e-commerce store loses over 77% of their sales that are initiated. So as we mentioned before, when we looked at that user experience, we looked at that component where people are getting to the checkout for whatever reason, they're then starting to fall off the website. And the most common reasons that we find when we did our research through this was it was unexpected costs. When someone goes to your product and they maybe add a bag of coffee granules or an umbrella, we use Kieran's reference, and we get to the checkout and then we see that the shipping fees are maybe 15 or 20 pounds. It blows you know, the expectations out of the window and people are shocked and they leave the website straight away. Or maybe it's the VAT or tax or any other small add-on. So just be aware of the, the true cost that you have there within that, that cart and what your users are going to expect when they get to the end. Some other examples we find was people that were just browsing, just having a look around, trying to see what's on. Maybe they found a better deal elsewhere. Maybe they were confused about the process or even had concerns about the security. And those last two points are extremely relevant to our previous slides. And we talked about that user experience. How simple is it to go from add the basket to cart to checkout and buy? 
And that's what you need to be asking yourself on a regular basis with your own sites. And that comes to anyone from a product site or maybe someone who's selling a service. And then again, we mentioned that security, that aspect of the SSL and getting that green padlock. And what you'll see with abandoned cart tracking, especially on sites like Shopify or Wix, you'll actually find that there's free add-ons or they're included as part of the plan where you can set up advanced email marketing, where you can send users an, an email that's very cleverly worded, something like, hey, you left something behind or why not come back and get 5% off. That ability to encourage users to reinvest in your business by coming back, looking into their emails and seeing that they're going to get an incentivization. We all know we love something for free or we love a deal, as we mentioned before. So being able to get that into someone's email inbox, get that clicked open and hopefully encourage them to come right back to the site where they left off. And we'll see here again from those stats that almost 30 to 50% of those open and click throughs um, are coming from those emails. And then finally, we look at that e-commerce. Again, we go back to SEO and how you can enhance your site's user experience through search engine. And as Kieran has related before to Amazon, how important it was even from Amazon being a search engine of their own right to bring that back to Google and Google search. So first of all, when we look at keywords, we need to be clear of the, the difference between a branded term versus generic terms. So for instance, if I'm selling electric and it's maybe just electric coffee, so it's coffee beans, I may call that electric and no one knows what that is. You don't know what electric is. You don't know what it's called. However, if I put in the product title electric coffee beans, it's clear that I'm blending those terminologies between that branded and generic search term. So Google understands that it's a coffee bean. It understands what you're using for. But then also your audience. Your audience understands what you're trying to promote and put in that site. And you'll often see when you look at these platforms, when you look at WordPress and you look at Wix and Shopify, you'll see these terms meta titles, meta descriptions. And these are quite simply the description you see in a Google search. So when you go to Google search and you see that title, that's the meta title and then a description underneath. And those titles are so important to get those right, to get your key names and the relevant terms across to your products. And that may be using some of those terminologies we looked at before, that incentivization, like percentages off, like cheap, like free, or whatever it may be to encourage users to click into those descriptions. Product structure is also of high value and significant importance to the site structure, which is categories. So when you think of Amazon, think of how structured it is, think of the categories. Maybe you're a department store and you have clothing as a category, and then within clothing, you maybe have subcategories for men, women, uh, footwear, and things like that. And that's how you structure your website. Google reads that content, it reads that categorization as a way of breaking down your website and understanding how you're putting your products across your audiences. And then we have product descriptions. Google has recommended you have a thousand plus words and anything with a thousand plus words is more than likely to rank within the first uh, top 10 results as a proven factor as of 2018. And one of the things we've seen that that is still relevant um, now ever more than before. And anything less with a thousand words just doesn't have the same uh, chance of getting there. Now, what we would encourage you to do is obviously a thousand plus words is very hard to do if you're writing a description of a shoe, but it's really trying to break that out of what it's for. It's breaking it down into the footwear, where it can be used, what it's best for, what season. And those are the terminology points that you can get in to help users find your product and see how suitable it is and relate to those key features and key components of that product. And finally, we then have rich snippets. Now, rich snippets is relatively new, but I'm very sure you would have seen this yourself in your own browsing. When we look at reviews especially, we can see a screenshot that I've taken here from Google, where you can see I've typed in brown leather shoes on Google, and you can see a list of products coming up. So from that, Google is already pulling my products out of my website and putting them in search in front of users. So I don't even have to click through your website to buy. I can simply see the product that I wish to do or wish to buy and click into that direct from Google search. And you'll see here in the example that we've added, there is reviews on one of these here from Colhan. So from that, we can see those 75 star reviews have really bought that out of position. And how we do that is through structured data. And to do that, we need to make sure that we're following the key steps from above. We're setting the category, we're getting reviews, and we're setting that appropriate title and meta description. So Kieran's gonna come back now and talk to us about the conversion and sales strategy within the website. And I will pass that over now. Great, thank you, Stephen. So just again, to highlight, uh, we, we talked uh, about a few sites there and you can see good and bad practice. Uh, Lings, for example, that car site, uh, back to, everyone being digital marketeers, they've come up with an ingenious strategy of taking all of the rules of what a good website should look like and breaking them or ignoring them. And on the back of that, they have been mentioned in so much press and have so many other websites linking them to them. Uh, and then they're mentioned in so many uh, courses like, like this all over the, the UK. So you can imagine how impactful that is for their brand as opposed to just being another 
uh, car site. So I wouldn't recommend that as a strategy for anyone, but it's again, just interesting to see that um, your digital strategy is very important and where you position yourself and, and how you implement it. But as I say, so they're so extreme, uh, but it's, it's really good to look at and it's a fun site. So, uh, and again, yeah, people, people are checking it out just because of that, but inter interesting to see. But what we recommend is of course, that you do follow the proven uh, best practice and uh, look at just your, your site uh, and, and analyze it and see where people are having problems in, in converting and, and not buying. So some other ideas that you should uh, really consider, and again, depending on the platform that you're on, you might find that you can actually add these in very easily and very quickly. Uh, so a loyalty or a referral program, uh, again, uh, we see these are very popular in some industries. And if you have a product, uh, maybe uh, for every purchase someone makes, they might uh, sign up and get points, and you're encouraging them to continue to come back and come back and come back, and that gives you more opportunities to email them updates on what the points are and what they get. So again, if, if your product or industry lends itself to that, then great. And, and how you can judge that um, is, are your competitors doing it? And if they are, then maybe uh, your consumers are programmed for something like this. But also if your competitors aren't, would something like this, if it was well packaged, actually appeal and help stand out and be different in your industry? Referrals are a great way to uh, encourage people to refer your business on to their friends. So for example, if I purchased a table uh, from your business and uh, I get a, a 20 pounds off voucher for my next purchase over a hundred pounds, as an example, and, and you're encouraging me, maybe you've given me a, a voucher code as well for a friend and I can pass that on to someone. So again, word of mouth, I'm referring your business to one of my friends who would probably trust that referral better than any marketing. And again, is that a good way to uh, in, increase your sales and to drive uh, new visitors to your site. Again, this we found this and thought, thought it was genius. Um, really, really like this. So what we have here is a site showing loads of pictures. But what they've done is, instead of just putting in loads of pictures of the products, they've actually taken quotes from press. And I can understand or see this working um, if you have really good testimonials or comments on social media and, or, or testimonials from Customers do confirm with the, the, the customer that you can actually use what they've said, and then maybe you could actually put in some quotes like this. So for example, instead of having another picture of a bag, what they have here is they've got a quote from Vogue says, uh, the perfect carry-on for under $250. So what is more powerful here? If there was another picture of the bag and it's the most amazing picture you've ever seen, or a quote like that, uh, or again, a quote from a real customer. Uh, so very different, yet so simple to do. Uh, and I am sure that is having a really positive impact on conversion uh, to sales. And again, for products and for uh, services too. Here's another thing that we see on sites. Um, so none of us like pop-ups and definitely on mobile don't do, but what, what we see in some sites is when you're actually leaving the site, so you've been on the site and you're about to leave it, uh, your, your mouse is going up towards the X in the top right corner to close the browser, the tab. You, you may find a pop-up like this uh, jump up and um, what, what web owners have realized is that if you leave the site, it's very hard to get someone back. Chances are they might not come back at all. So you're giving a little bit of incentive for them to reconsider purchasing. And again, would something like this work on, on your site as an idea? Uh, back to Amazon, the, the, the e-commerce uh, leaders in, in, in so many ways, uh, they actually have an option when you purchase a product that you'll find um, underneath it that you have an opportunity to share this item on social media so you can share a purchase that you've made. And again, if more than 50 or one in hundred people do this, you're exposing that purchase uh, to maybe a, a, a group of friends, 50, 100, 500, who knows how many on, on social networks, but it's also building a link uh, and traffic back to your own website. So this is something I definitely recommend. This is, I, I love examples like this. And again, I'm sure you're watching this and thinking, well, this is unusual. Uh, and we mentioned last week about if you're using platforms like Amazon, trying to put something unique into the package to engage with a customer in incentivizing or asking them or prompting them to write a review. Obviously, um, you want to be careful with the T's and C's, but encouraging someone to uh, craft, uh, you know, feed, give you feedback uh, on, on the product. So. This is from a, a company or a website called LucyAnn.co. And what they've done is in their products, they've got a card printed, uh, which we see in front of us, and sent this out with the products, encouraging people to 
take an Instagram photo and uh, they're giving them the hashtags and everything to share online. And what's happening is uh, here is twofold. We're getting one, we're getting people who are actually taking action and sharing pro uh, pictures uh, from other products on Instagram. And the brand is incredibly smart and social, amazing to see. So you can check it out again. And this is what happens when someone gets it right. Uh, and But to the nth degree, uh, people are talking about it. Um, but then second thing that happened is that people were so impressed with the marketing aspect of it that they're actually sharing that as well. So again, there's a double win there for the brand. And then of course, it's been, uh, it's been shared with the, um, people's friends and family, uh, again, on social media. So you're not paying for that engagement. And, and that is one of the best um, referrals and testimonials you can get. By email, so we've all mentioned these uh, a couple of times and, and uh, that we all know uh, the first thing, or one of the first things we do when we start working, uh, rightly or wrongly, is open our emails in the morning. So, um, if people have signed up and opted into your email newsletter, uh, are you able to uh, drop them reminder emails or buy emails or uh, remind them what's in their cart? So again, a very powerful way, don't discount email marketing. Cross-selling, so again, on Amazon, you can see cross-selling uh, as an example again, we're using referring to, to Amazon a lot, but it's an easy example that a lot of people will be able to see and probably experience just highlighting some key aspects of this. So um, under a lot of products, you will find frequently bought together. And, and what they're doing there is trying to get your their, their number of units sold per cart uh, up from maybe one uh, to two or three. So again, can you do this on your site? And if your product uh, uh, or service um, lends to this, then how do you do that? And technically, ironically, you know, many of the platforms, it's very easy to do. You can pull in plugins that will do this for you. It's just actually knowing that this is something you should be doing and um, adding that um, to your site. Trust badges, very important, again, that people feel uh, assured about purchasing, that you're following all the, the, the procedures and policies that are laid out around um, buying safely online, making sure that your payment uh, gateways are secure and, and um, uh, really strong uh, businesses, and obviously making sure that you're following all the GDPR compliances around what you do as well in, in regards to websites, and you should get advice uh, on that for your business, which I'm sure you are already. Um, but actually adding, so if you're using any of these products, actually telling people that you're using them. So if you're using PayPal Verified, and there's a badge for that, if you're using secure uh, software in your site, um, and the SSL cert, if you're using any of those, putting that front and center to give people reassurance that you're taking uh, a lot of precautions to protect uh, your business and uh, their custom and their details as well. So very important that you and give due consideration to all of that aspect of uh, online. And then some other examples as well, just to, to fly through. So, uh, and we highlighted an example of this area. So ask for less information when someone's buying or signing up, um, because every form that you add in will slow down uh, your, or reduce your adoption rate. And consider live chat, as we mentioned, but um, also it boosts trust. So when you see live chat in the, mo in, in the corner and you see a person's real face, um, and if it's an individual, you can actually, can you talk to them now? They might not be available right at this moment, but even that uh, is, a, is a trust booster. So do consider using that as well. Social proof, which is again, social, our customers, are they sharing great comments online? Can we embed them into our site, into our blogs, uh, on the products? So reach out when you see someone tag your product or mention it and it's positive and ask them, can, can you feature that on your, uh, on your website? on your product and fingers crossed they'll say yes and uh, get that social proof and now you can see how important that is and you can lead that by asking people to write reviews uh, and testimonies on your products as well and um, the faq so build out your pages and, and uh, we've mentioned here product and category pages so answer the questions that people are likely to be asking and what are the faqs that people are going to ask well if you're selling a product for a little while if you're in a shop uh, or even talking to someone on a, on a phone call um, you know the questions that they are asking you today are likely to ask about the product. So put them in and as you're asking you a question, why not go back and add it in and answer that question on your website. So when someone visits that website uh, and, and it's, it's selling, not you, that you're able to, uh, that page is actually working for you. Load time is very important. So again, how quick does your website load? Uh, is, it, is it seven seconds, 10 seconds, three seconds? And there's loads of free and website checkers out there that will uh, check your load time. So do check that out. Uh, two, two impacts here is one that uh, the slow your site loads, 
the less people are going to see it in Google. It'll be, it'll be shown up less. And secondly, is that if it's really slow and people are trying to um, go through the pages and having a bad user experience, then they will leave. There's a, there's a higher chance that they'll leave your site. What, a, what about a comparison guide? So again, if you're selling a product, let's say, uh, again, we're talking about umbrellas, but you're selling a, a, a broad range of them, why not compare them um, side by side and, and use the dots or the ticks and, and highlight what you're getting with each one. Make it easy for people to make a decision, make the purchase. So, okay, this one is $9.99, this one's $15.99, but why? Oh, okay, it's got these extra features. That, that's actually really good and I want that and it's, it's fair for that price. So just, again, remove the barriers, help people and make that um, add to cart button decision and click that button. It's, it, that's what we all need to do. Reviews, so, so important as we've seen in some of the screenshots, they appear in, in search engines. Uh, and actually then when people are on your, on your site, they make uh, decisions easier for people to purchase if they see reviews and know that you're delivering good service. And then repeat orders. So think of all the people who have already ordered from you. Uh, is there an opportunity if they've signed up to your newsletter? In particular, is there an opportunity for you to go back and uh, remind them and maybe send them some uh, details on offers that you have at the moment so don't forget old customers uh, for sure so uh, again another good way to drive new business to to your website and again just a, a real, real big point is um, the more people you get on your website and you're using Google Analytics uh, people Google is actually tracking that seeing how much time is spent on site and time on site is a very good indicator of how good your website is so if someone visits your website and spends two seconds or 10 seconds or 15 seconds and bounces to another site, then that's a bad um, experience. It's, it's, it's not answering the question that people went on your site for. What you do want to do is, is give them the answer. So if someone goes on your site and spends two minutes or three minutes, then that is a really good um, uh, example that your page is, is a quality page and answering the questions they might have. There's a couple of things you can do on that page that we highlighted already making sure you've got loads of content on the page. But also another one that uh, really uh, effective trick that we use is putting a video in that page. So what you find is that I, I might uh, scan the page, look at the photos, but there's a video in the middle. So maybe I spend a minute looking down the page and then there's a video in the minute. Uh, and in the middle, it's a minute long, I press play. And next thing I watch the whole video. So I'm at two minutes. Um, on that page, so it's really, and, and, and it's answering so many more questions and we, we all watch so many videos at the moment. So again, uh, consider that.